Hi, my name is Steve Christensen. I'm, I'm joined right now with Dr. Ruth Williams, who is the president of Wheaton Eye Clinic. And Dr. Williams has some unique perspectives on our changing healthcare landscape. Dr. Williams, uh, private equity has become a hot topic within ophthalmology. How do you anticipate private equity changing our field in the future? Well, private equity is not going to change ophthalmology all that much for a couple reasons. Um, first of all, the there's a lot of money right now outside of the stock market, and so these private equity firms are looking for places to invest, and ophthalmology practices are a great place. But when interest rates go up, when the economy changes, I think this fever of private equity will diminish. Furthermore, the a private equity strategy is typically a three to five year play and there are only so many of those plays one can do um, you, know, bef you know, before that strategy no longer has uh, a lot of money to be made. So I don't think private equity will be a long term player in ophthalmology. Okay, what advice do you have for young ophthalmologists that are looking for their first job or maybe changing jobs and their practice may potentially be interested in being bought by private equity or kind of playing that private equity game. How, how should we navigate this changing landscape? Well, I think the most important thing is not to be too nervous about it, to recognize it for what it is. There are some practices that will go that route or look for capitalization um, to private equity, but most practices are going to keep doing what we've always done, which is focus on our core values of providing fabulous um, I care to our patients. So the other reason I don't think young ophthalmologists should be nervous is it's very common for people, as you know, to have um, one or two jobs. It's not like the old days where you got a job and stayed there forever. So, you know, I think the most important thing for people to do is understand, to the best of your knowledge, what it is you're getting into and how you can get out. Okay. And, and what about these uh, large healthcare systems? And um, how should we kind of uh, participate with larger healthcare systems? In, and what do you think the future of ophthalmology is in its interaction with these large healthcare systems? Well, it's so interesting right now. I really think we're in the middle of a healthcare rev revolution and um, things are changing very quickly. Uh, I think that the, the large integrated health systems are actually way more important and will have a more lasting impact on the healthcare environment than private equity. Because quietly, the, the health systems are consolidating in a town like Chicago, where I am. There are about five big systems. I expect there to be even fewer. I know in your town of Cincinnati, you used to have fragmented care, and now there are a smaller number of integrated health care systems. So ophthalmology, for the most part, exists outside of that. But increasingly, we will be dependent I, let me say interdependent on the large healthcare systems. And unlike PE, they're here to stay. Fair enough. And then just finally, touch base just a little bit on how you anticipate artificial intelligence and big data and some of these recent trends in technology affecting the practice of ophthalmology in the future. Well, two things. I think AI and big data is so exciting as it can be applied to healthcare. And um, secondly, I think we need it. So. The aging demographic is going to deluge our systems with patients who have cataracts, glaucoma, and macular degeneration. With our present models of care, we can't possibly take care of all these patients. So AI will help us um, deliver better care based on you know, large data, big data, but I also think we will harness it to help us create more efficient care. I'll give you a quick example. Right now, when we think a glaucoma patient is progressing, we might order a certain number of fields, and one of the really interesting research areas in glaucoma is how do you really know that a patient is progressing? But in the future, I think we'll be able to harness uh, big data and AI to help us identify the fast progressors and tell us how often the fields can be done. And then instead of coming in and having you know, a lot of fields in our office, we'll send them home with VR and have them do you know, say three or four or six fields at intervals in, at home, and then we'll just have more data to, to analyze the patient. I think it's very exciting. 
Well, certainly this is an exciting time to be in ophthalmology, and we're so fortunate to have leaders like yourself uh, pushing us and leading us into the future. So Thanks, thank you for Steve. your time. Great to talk.